I'm Sonia Morton Firth and you're watching The Sonia Morton Firth Show. Today my guest is Carol Pike. Carol has suffered two strokes which has left her with a minimal memory. She didn't recognise who she was and had to learn to walk again. Despite this, Carol sees every day as an adventure. Her enthusiasm and positive outlook has helped her clients promote their authentic selves. Carol, thank you so much for being a guest on my show. It's an honor to have you here sitting in my kitchen. It's amazing. And you look absolutely stunning. Well, thank you, darling, because this is, this is my favorite color. Red, I yeah. love red. Do you know what? It's my favorite color oh. as well. Do you know what that says about somebody? I don't know, because I think that in the olden days, that might have said, um, maybe not, <laughs> not such positive things. <laughs> anyway, you, you're looking absolutely fantastic. Carol, tell me a little bit more about your, the strokes that you had. So, um, I know you've had two strokes, but there was some time in between that. How, yeah. did, how did the two strokes differ? Well, the first stroke, and I have to tell you what it was called, it was a right frontal lobe infarct. Right. I love saying that because that always sounds like a swear word. It does. It does. <laughs> um, so it was kind of right frontal lobe, which deals with focus, emotions, and processing. And one of the significant things from the first stroke was if I was in a room full of people, like if you go to a workshop and they do that whole, oh, let's introduce ourselves, mm. I would burst into tears because I was actually unable to do that which actually obviously didn't work so well mm -hmm. because I don't look like somebody that would have that challenge. And even when I said that to people, they couldn't understand that. But the great thing is about stroke number two is I don't have so that problem anymore. This was, all, this was just following stroke number this one? This was following stroke number one. So, uh, I mean, it, how did they diagnose you with stroke number two? So I woke up with the worst headache I'd ever had in my life. And um, I have an underlying condition called lupus, which is an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system is overactive and it attacks itself. Wow, that, sounds, that doesn't sound too good. Yeah, no, it hasn't been, hasn't been pleasant. But when I woke up and I had the really awful headache, I thought, oh, it's a lupus thing and it will pass, mm. you know. And I don't like hospitals, so I avoid them at all costs. I'm not surprised, especially after the first stroke. Right. Probably something you don't um, want to do. Yeah, it, actually, there was a period of time where I would be in hospital every six weeks, but that's a whole nother, whole nother conversation. Oh, wow, what was that? But that was with the lupus. So any, they haven't mentioned a stroke at this no. stage? They, they think it's something... Yeah, yeah so, okay. um, so for 12 hours, they keep an eye on me, but my, the weakness on my left side now gets worse, because this, again, was on the right side, but mm. in a different part. Um, so the left side's getting weaker and then I know it's serious when I am being blue lighted to another hospital yeah, and I think, oh, okay, maybe this isn't, uh, just a headache, maybe it's something else. And then I go there and that's when it is that they t tell me it's a stroke. But in fine Carol style, um, only 18% of all strokes are bleeds. So when the doctor said to me that it was a stroke and it was a bleed, I said, oh my gosh, I'm in the top set. I'm in the top percentile because I'm in the top 80%. <laughs> and he said, Carol, nobody thinks like that, which probably sums so much. Well, it sort of sums you up. You yes. always look as glasses half full. Yes. And, and so what happened after that? You said, you woke, did you wake up in the, in well, the in What's the kind hospital? of really interesting, it kind of feels as though everything seemed... Um, I, for want of a better term, normal. Um, I ha had the headache, we now knew what it was, and I was in one hospital. And then um, I go to church, and so on the first Sunday, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm missing church. On the second Sunday, I thought, oh no, I'm missing church. On the third Sunday, I don't go to church. And so everything seemed to change, and that um, I didn't walk because my left leg was having a I don't even know, I can't even know how to describe it, it just wasn't working. So you had to learn So to they took me, to, took me to, the, to, the, to the bathroom and people brought food and people came to see me, so there wasn't a problem. But the physio kept saying that you need to get out, you need to walk, but I couldn't understand why, because I didn't have anywhere to go. So there was no life for me outside the hospital, because now the hospital was the only thing that I knew. So your mem you, yes. your memory literally had been, so you had no memory yeah. at all? So I didn't actually realise that, that, that what, what had happened. Um, it was just that I didn't have any memory outside the hospital, so there was nowhere for me to go. So I didn't need to walk. Right, and then when it was that the, the physio kept insisting and I'd get up, and I tried and I did this thing that I was so proud of, and I referred to it as a stroke brain shuffle. But apparently you're supposed to pick up your feet and bend your knees. Um, that's how you walk. But I didn't know that. 
Because you didn't know how to walk. Because I didn't know right? how to walk. And so that was just kind of really interesting one. And I remember thinking, I don't know how babies do it. Or better still, why? Because this is just so hard and so complicated. Um, and so it took me a long time to just kind of try and work out how do you bend your knees? How do you lift your foot mm-hmm. up in order to be able to, to do this? Because I couldn't work out why. And I think it was that whole thing that I needed to have a reason why um, which is kind of significant in terms of yes, our walk through life. Completely. But, um, and I couldn't find a reason why I needed to get up and walk, um, apart from now to, to shut up the um, physios. <laughs> so, so what happened after that? I mean, what so in then terms I was, of if, if you're not okay. knowing yeah, what, so what's happening so it's in just your kind life of, or so, your memory? Yeah, so it's that whole thing about just trying to relearn things. And then I discovered that I have got partial facial blindness, which means that there are lots of people who I might have known for the last 20 years, but I will swear to you that I've never seen their faces before in my life. So that might be an advantage for some people. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then I've discovered I know lots of people. So this is kind of like really complicated because lots of people. But I also realised that one of the people that I didn't know was me. Was you. Because when I looked in the mirror... Who, yeah, I was going to say, what yeah. did you see when you looked and in the mirror? And it seems interesting because it wasn't... So bearing in mind, I've now been in two hospitals. I only remember seeing me in the second hospital. So I actually didn't take any notice in the first hospital. And the second hospital, every time I went to the bathroom, this same person kept showing up. And I kept thinking, oh, okay, there's got to be something significant. I know the features, but I'm not really sure who that person is. And then one day I decided it must be me because I was the only black person in the room. Okay. And so I wonder if the nurse had been black, whether I would have had a different conclusion. But now I know the features. I don't know who the person is. And in fact, for a long time, I referred to Carol Pike as, an, as, as a separate person. So that whole new meaning to me, myself and I, it was just like, oh, Carol Pike. Um, and it took me a little while to make the connection that uh, Carol Pike is you. And put the two people together. How did you get to know you? How did you find yeah, that out? Well, the first instance, I said this to somebody, I have no idea who it is I am. And they said, oh, well, you need to go and read your Facebook posts because you are inspirational. <laughs> that is exactly who it is that you are. You are exactly who it is you are on, online. So um, I kind of like discovered that later on, that um, I w- was in marketing. I used to do... Um, training with Portobello Business Centre on marketing strategy and market research and basically you work with people on their marketing strategy and on personal brands so it was about kind of personal branding but I didn't have any major memories of any of those things and so it was kind of really weird because I came out of hospital I was actually out of hospital for two weeks and then my left side wasn't cooperating and um, the doctor called the ambulance again. So I actually spent a lot of time in ambulances and I actually did lots of videos at backs of ambulances it's... saying, hi, here I am again. <laughs> um, and then I spent a further three weeks in another hospital. So I've actually done three hospitals and numerous rides in ambulances. So how have you managed to maintain this positive, enthusiastic, I mean, I can feel your energy. I'm very much a person about energy and I can feel like your vivacious, uh, you know, your, your life yeah. force. Well, I think it's two things. One was that um, my mum, uh, who's been dead for 24 years, um, actually, when I was in hospital, I remembered she died because she didn't come to see me. So I didn't actually have the recollection. But she was the first empowerment guru that I'd ever experienced. She was always encouraging me. She always said things like, I remember asking her, um, are you proud of me? And she said, it's more important that you are proud of yourself. Very, very you know. Wise and so just kind of lots of things that she pushed me to be the best at whatever it is I was doing. In fact, she told me that if you're going to be a thief, be the queen of thieves which I always thought that wasn't what you should be telling a child. (laughs) Um, But it was that whole thing that whatever you're going to do, just be the best version of it for yourself. So it's not about comparing you to somebody else. Be the best best version of yourself. Absolutely. And so so I had that kind of like stock. And I also have a faith. So I believe in in God. And I believed that the reason I was alive, because had my friend not called me on the Wednesday, I would have died. Because I was staying at home, waiting for the headache to go, and the blood pressure would have just gone up and up, and I would have just died. Do you think your face got you through it? Yes. Yeah, so I think that the, the, so so I think this combination of that like, was already rooted in I I was always the, already the person that could find you a silver lining in any cloud, 
the, whatever it is. You know, you come to me crying, I will tell you that there are 38 toxins in each tear. So keep crying. You're detoxing <laughs> at the same time. Um, so I was always able to find the silver lining in, in every cloud. Yeah. But in this instance, I really needed to, to dig deep. And for me, because I was alive, and it could so easily have been different. It had to have been for a reason. Because for me, I needed to find a reason for something. Absolutely. So if I'm alive, it's got to be for a reason. Oh my gosh, I've got things to do. And what, what, what was the reason? What were well, the things to do? That's kind of interesting because um, I started posting on Facebook. And I started just talking about my day or the challenges or the things that didn't work or all of those things. And the amount of people that talked about how inspired they were. And I've had private messages of people saying that you don't realise that watching your walk through life, how that's helped me mm. walk through mine. Mm. And I thought, oh, wow. So my reason to be here is to show people that there's more to their life than they are currently settled for or currently experiencing. That actually my day-to-day -day challenges, and they are daily challenges, are real. Um, but I'm not stopping at the challenge. So I know that when I get up in the morning, A, my left leg may not work, because apparently my brain and my leg have got a disagreement. I keep trying to get them in a room so they can sort it out because I'm in the middle. Yeah, but it's the mind body connection, fair. isn't yeah. it? I mean, there are there are times where I feel like you know there's there's parts of your body you feel more connected to yeah. to other parts, and yeah. it's interesting. It's, yeah. So it's, yeah, so they've really, really got this major disagreement, and like sometimes it's just you know you kind of think seriously, really, um, and so I have to overcome those challenges on a daily basis. And the only reason I get out of bed every day is that I'm believing that somewhere along the line that something I've said, something that I've done is going to help somebody else do what it is that they need to do. And I don't actually have to know who it is that they are. I just need to know that actually show up on purpose, Carol, and that's where it is that the magic that, happens. And what is, that's really interesting you say, that show up on purpose. What does that mean for you? Well, I show up as, as me. So I now know, so I was saying that I didn't know who it was I was, and I now understand that I am inspirational. Smiling isn't what I do, because I think that prior to the stroke, that I probably thought that what I did was inspire people. What I did was smile, whereas I actually now know that that is who I am. It's part of my DNA because I've got pictures um, of me with oxygen in my nose and I'm smiling. So that's yeah. so interesting. So can I just repeat that yeah. so I understand it? So before the stroke number two, you, yeah. you, you were inspirational. Yeah. Uh, you did smile. Yeah. But after stroke number one, you realised that was actually you. Uh, yeah. So I'd, and it was actually part of you. Yeah. That's it, just because that yeah. feels so different to yes. me. Yes. Than than sort of thinking, well, I need to be this yeah. person rather no. than actually this is who I am. Yeah. And everyone's different. Yeah. And that's that kind of whole thing. So I've recognised, and like one of the the greatest examples of this for me was I was in hospital and they had a reading group and they asked me if I wanted to join and I thought I'm not doing anything, might as well. And so we did a round. There was myself, a patient, a nurse, and two external people. And so we did a round the table read and then we had a free flow conversation. And the the um, the non patients looked at me and said, "You need to be a motivational speaker." And to which I kind of looked to God and laughed because I was in pyjamas, in a wheelchair, and I hadn't had a wash yet. And in that moment, I realised that I, there was nothing that I did to get them to draw that conclusion. And none of them had met me before, so it wasn't based on any past experience. It was just based on how it was I showed up in that moment. So if I was to ask you, or if the audience of those people that were saying, how do you find that? How do you find out who you are? Without well, obviously going through a stroke. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would kind of say that that's not the right way to do it. That, that's, you know, yes, not don't probably, do it that way. Yeah, yeah, no, the way it's a bit dramatic. Yeah. But it is one of the things that I, and somebody had actually said this, and I realised that this is it. What the stroke has actually done, or this stroke, um, has given me an opportunity to pause and actually look at who it is that I am. Mm. And what it, why it is I'm here. And I think that that's what it is, that we need to take some time out to pause because we're spending so much time running around trying to achieve this, trying to do that, achieve that. trying to be like that do person, that girl, to do, do that, that girl, thing. Yeah. No, actually, no, we need to pause because one of the things that I now say to everybody is that we talk about the things it is that we want to achieve. And that's great because we know that we need to have those big, hairy, audacious goals. Mm. Fabulous. But we never think about who we need to be or who it is that we are in order to achieve those things. 
And it's that kind of whole thing about actually knowing that there is more to you than you have currently settled for. Because it isn't even just what it is that you're experiencing. Because somewhere along the line, something has happened and you've said, that's all it is that I am. Or that's as far as, as that I can go. Or actually, I'm not good enough because of X, Y, and Z. I, mean, I guess it's being like in being in the relationship and thinking, I'm yes. just settling for that's this. It. This is the relation I'm settling for. I'm going to carry on with this man that's or it. woman. Yeah, actually, they know, don't make me happy, but I'm but just because you know, I can't do any better. Because I can't do any better. Yes. And so I'm saying to everybody that's listening here, there is more to your life than you have currently settled for. And you have got more value in you than you actually recognise. Because mm. I firmly believe that the core essence that makes you you. In fact, I think everybody is awesome. We've just got different flavours. For me, the most, you know, discovering who I was and my, my true purpose, it it all came with that pause. Mm. And as you say, you need that pause because we're all running around having stressful lives, yeah. achieving and overachieving. And, you know, we, we're just, we're just past January and everyone's been goal setting like mad yeah. and thinking, how am I going to achieve this goal, that goal and the other goal? And sometimes I think it's a, it's a load of bollocks, actually, <laughs> because if you don't know who you are, yeah. if you don't discover your true self, none of these goals are going to actually happen. Yeah. And are they really your goals? Yeah. But, that's really interesting because actually nobody talks about who it is that you need to be in order to achieve those amazing goals that you set yourself. They're smart, how fabulous, mm. but actually who do you need to be in order for that to happen? And I just kind of find that most fascinating and particularly as personal branding is my absolute passion. Oh, I can see in your branded beautifully. <laughs> well, thank you, darling. Um, but I see personal branding differently. I see it as the story you tell the moment you show up before you've uttered a single word. And that story begins with the story you tell yourself. Tell me more on that, the moment you show up. So how would you, what, what, how would you tell somebody that they, they, or not tell them how should they should show up, but how would they recognise how they show up? But I think it's that kind of whole thing that you already know partially about that because you know that you're going to an event and you're feeling intimidated or you're feeling a bit anxious. And if that's how it is that you're feeling, that's the conversation that you're having with yourself. That's what it is that you're giving off. That's, mm. the, that's the sound that you're making when it is that you show up in a room. And that's what it is that people are reading. And so some people will push beyond that and other people will say, okay, well, that person, you know, isn't, confident in themselves or that person doesn't look happy or that person yes. x y and z yeah, and so therefore a, yeah. they'll determine the story mm. based on on that because one of the things that i now know for sure is if i show up in a room and you meet me if you may not remember my name you may not remember anything that i said but you will never forget me yeah. because i am yeah. kind of just owning my awesome so i'll say to you that i am awesome but i'm not awesome because i want you to believe me I'm not awesome because I'm trying to convince you that that's the case. I am just awesome. And so I'm standing in that truth, irrespective of your response to me. I mean, you, you have a power, you yeah. know, I, I can feel your powerful mm. energy. Um, and I can imagine if we were sat in a room and it was a crowded yeah. room that, that well, I, I know because we we yeah. met in a crowded room yeah. and, you, and you do stand out. Um, and, and that's not just because of how you look, but yeah. it's your the energy. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. I'm, I feel from, from energy, mm. the energy you give yeah. off. Is and that's been really interesting for me because I didn't a hundred percent. So whilst it is, I've spoken about this. You know, I, I've looked back on past things that I've written, conversations that I've had with people. So I'm not changing what is I'm saying, but I I now know this to be even truer than I believed it to be because I'm actually walking the talk that actually I'm supposed to speak. And I had said that to someone who, when I said to them, um, I'm not ready to come out, I'm not coming out till June. And they said, but didn't you tell me that you are here to speak? Um, didn't you tell me that God told you that you're here to speak? And don't you think that this is God telling you to get out and speak? And I thought, oh, okay then. Um, and I went and spoke at, um, at this event. And one of the interesting things for me to hear myself speak was that I said, this stroke is going to pay. And I thought that's interesting because I hadn't mm -hmm. thought about that until language. the moment I said it. And then I thought, oh, OK. And so therefore, that's it. This stroke is going to pay. That's very interesting. And is it true that you've got no fear, no anxiety, no worry, and you're literally living in the now? Yep. <laughs> um, because, because, because I have no major memories pre-February 2019, mm. I have no frame of reference for worry, fear, anxiety or regret. I actually don't know what it is that it feels like. 
And I mean, that must be, I mean, that in itself must be awesome well, because well, most of us live in our fear <laughs> or in our past or with anxiety or worry or the stresses well, of well, modern day life. What, what was really interesting for me was that people kept saying things to me like, don't worry, or you must be really scared. And so for a long time, I thought, oh my gosh, this world, everybody's fearful, worried. Yeah, we're all oh my gosh, what is this? <laughs> and then there was an advert for cat. And apparently cats are scared, worried, and anxious. Yeah. And I thought, oh wow, this is a really interesting world that I'm living in. But because I don't have, I actually haven't experienced it post stroke number two, I've got no way of saying, oh, this is what it is. And so for a long time, I thought I only had one emotion that's love, because I love everything and everybody. Um, but I realized I still have the same realm of emotions. I just don't have the labels. And that's really significant because there was a day where somebody had done a, um, an ad, a call out for um, African and Caribbean people to go to a photo shoot. And it was near where it was I lived. And I thought, oh, I'll do that. Right. So I've said, yes, the day has come. They give me the address. I've gone on, on a bus, which is the longest I've traveled on a bus by myself. I got off the bus and I'm trying to find the, the location. And in that moment, I'm conscious of the fact that I'm going to a place that I don't know to meet someone I've never met before to do something I've never done. And yeah. I thought, oh my gosh, the world could say that this was scary. But for me, it was excitement and it was an adventure. And then in that moment, I realized that actually the thing itself isn't necessarily the thing. It's the label that we give to it that takes on those characteristics. How we look at it with our own filters. Isn't yeah, it? and it's just like, oh wow. Yes. Because it's not scary. You're getting on a bus. That's, that's not it. scary. You're standing and doing yeah. a... So, yeah, so that's kind of been really issues. interesting to say that actually the labels we put on things are the ones that are, are the things that, that, that challenge us the most, not the thing itself. And so one of the things I talk to people about is that your past experiences and it's been, it was devastating and it was horrendous and it was awful at the time and the emotions there were just kind of like, oh my gosh, it was terrible. But it can't be the same emotion now because you're not experiencing it. So you're remembering it, but you're not experiencing it. And we don't make a distinction between what's happening, what happened then and what's happening now. So we don't see it as an event that happened and the emotions that are associated with it then. But now as I remember it, the emotions have to be different because I made it to this point. And that whole thing that we just bring it all to this space yeah. and then say, oh yeah, I'm living. So, so basically our brains tricked us into yeah. thinking Please. that we're still scared, we're still fearful, yeah. we've still got anxiety over that, yeah. that event that happened That's in the it. past. And actually, just in terms of physically, actually that can't be possible because we're, you're, like, you're sitting in a room. With, in the now. In the now and nothing's happening. So actually you can't have that same emotion. Yeah. And we're just lying to ourselves. And, and yet we bring it into a yeah. similar situation and it'll fill us with fear, That's fill it. us with anxiety, fill us with and whatever because of what happened yeah. in the past when so that, actually we should just be yeah so we kind of live in yeah, just kind of present to the moment carol yeah. what's next for you where do you see or do you see the future well it's kind of interesting because i was thinking about that because you know like people say oh yeah you need to look at the next five years mm. and say, actually i don't have a five-year vision okay. actually i'm just still trying to work on the day-to-day -day, but i'm looking at 2020 and i'm super excited about the 2020s because 2020 is all about vision, 2020 yeah. vision. Um, and I'm looking at 2020 brand vision because it's actually about knowing and being clear about who it is that you are because that the moment is you know who you are and that you show up on purpose, quite literally magic happens. You know, that kind of stuff. I'm speaking at an, 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 uh, an International Women's Day event in Marbella next month. Fantastic. I'm speaking and I'm doing a workshop. Oh my gosh. And that's your vision, that's the vision. That's the name. Yeah. yeah, so I'm, I, am a, I'm, I am claiming I'm an international speaker. Mm. And so it's kind of looking at speaking on four continents, you know, just kind of actually just showing up on purpose and doing that. And just kind of spreading the word that some stuff doesn't have to stop you. It might help, you might need to change direction or you may need to do things differently, but it doesn't need to stop you. And also this whole thing about looking back so many people are saying I, 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 I'm a woman of faith and so people have been praying for me to be back to normal for the first few weeks of having a stroke I thought that they'd invented a time machine because everybody talks in backward language 
that they say I want to go back to. Mm. And you're thinking, actually, why? You why can't. Wanna, yeah. But actually, you can't go back. And so why, not, why don't we speak in forward language that I want to or I'm going to because that, you're now facing the right direction and now you will, you will be able to find ways to navigate your obstacles. Because if I said to you, do you know what, I want to go back to who it was I was, I'm stuck, first of all, because I have no idea really who that no, person Yeah, is. you can only go forward, yeah, right? so I can only move forward. And so I'm excited about helping other people to find their awesome. That's fantastic. Because I know that I'm special, and I know that sometimes I, I, I'm special needs. And if people want to find out more about you, we'll put all of this in the show notes, but should they go to your website? Yes, that would be kind of a great place to start. And my website is... Um, words that deliver. Words that deliver. Dot That's com. Beautiful. Because I'm all about the, the story and all about the spark. Actually, I need to tell you about the spark. Spark. Tell me about the spark. Right. Because everything it is that we have ever done or will ever do had some kind of impetus, some kind of catalyst, some kind of inspiration to get us going. And I've referred to that as the spark. But spark is also an acronym for story. Because we've all got a story that we're either saying about ourselves or what it is that we want to do that's either holding us back or propelling us forward. So there's always a story. There's the passion. And the passion is that the, the fuel in your engine, but that powerful why. Because unless you own the why, actually, when you come across the first obstacle, it's going to derail you. Yeah, of course. You know, and then A is about authentic voice. Because we talk about authenticity and we talk about being authentic. But what does that mean? Because that means different things to different people. But your authentic voice is the sound you make when it is that you show up. Mm. Who are you? What, what is that sound that you're making? And R is about resources. Okay, what do you need to help you to be, do and have what it is that you need? Because we talk about it often, oh, I don't have the money to do it. Rarely is it a money issue, because mm. it might be a mindset issue, it might be accountability, it might be a system, it might be a buddy, skill set, skill set or, yeah. you know, so yeah. actually really breaking that down into, into to, to the real things it is that you need. And K is about know-how, that we're in that whole knowledge economy where everybody keeps saying that knowledge is power. I'm going to challenge you that nobody wants power, they want to be powerful, which is the application of knowledge. It's like saying that people want money. No, you don't want money. You want mon what money can buy. And so that kind of whole thing about, okay, so what are the actions that you're actually going to take to get you from where you are to where it is you want, want to be? Because when I was a child, they told me anything ending in I-N-G was a doing word. So we're planning, we're, we're writing, we're strategizing, we're procrastinating, we're busy. Doing keeps you busy. Only action moves you forward. I love it. So it's all about kind of know-how, what are those actions, and that's the spark. And I've now realised that that relates to everything, whether that be relationships, whether that be finances, whether that be home, health, the whole gamut. And so therefore, I now have this methodology in relation to that, helping you to navigate the spark in your life. And we know that the spark, it only takes a tiny spark to set the world on fire. Well, I can certainly feel your spark that's <laughs> coming across right now, Carol. Carol, I could speak to you for ages, but we've reached my final question, okay. which is, I'm quite interested in this one. So if you were to write a message in a bottle for future generations to find, what would that message mm. be? That's a great question. Like we have, to think of so many. Um, I think that the, the key, key thing is that you are amazing just as you are. And that is warts and all. I often talk about it in terms of good, the bad and the flabby. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but actually you are amazing just as you are. That it doesn't matter what has happened to you, that that does not um, disqualify you from moving forward and doing something else because the past actually informs the present but it doesn't determine the future you choose you have a choice whatever the situation is you always have a choice, choice. I love it Carol thank you so much for being a guest oh, on my I show see. lovely lady <laughs> hope you enjoyed the show remember there's a new interview out every Monday so hit subscribe and like and you'll get it straight into your inbox.